Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. Today we have we're answering a viewer's question, but I think this is a fun one for us because we have done this on our blog so many times. Yeah. Um, so Winter Willow asked if we could do a video to define some of the agenting slash publishing terms that every author should know um, yeah. throughout the process. And Jessica has been doing this on our blog for years. Yeah, for we I think there is a total of six editions of publishing terms which is much more comprehensive than what we have here and I was actually so excited by this Winter Willow that I'm going to break these down and do one-offs on our Instagram for anybody who follows us there um, and probably on TikTok as well so I will do one-offs each term at a time and probably a few that maybe we don't cover here today. Yeah, and we'll link down below the most recent edition of our publishing dictionary, which has everything. It has genre, it has all of the different contracts, it has everything. Everything. You don't even have to list it. But today we're going to do maybe the most common and important ones, I would say, yeah. um, that I think don't have the <laughs> like common sense and that you might you might know the genres, but I don't think you would know these if you're new to publishing. Yeah, Winter Willow specifically asked that we focus on contract terms, and so we are doing that heavily, but there were a few leading up to it that we wanted to talk about um, that are important, especially for our newer viewers who are just entering the world of publishing. Exactly. Yep. Okay, so let's start with querying or query or query letter, because they're all kind of related. Um, so a query letter is the letter that you're going to write about you and your book that you're sending to literary agents to try and get their attention and hopefully secure their representation. So yeah. we've talked a lot on the channel and you can definitely go through and look about how to write them and, and what they need. But this is basically the cover letter for your book that mm -hmm. that's how people are being introduced to you. Perfect. And querying is the process of sending that out. So you might yeah. people say they're in the querying trenches. That just means that they're in the thick of it. They're sending out these letters to agents. It could be a pretty long process. Um, so that's why it's called the trenches. But <laughs> um, that's just the whole overall process. Yep. Um, so our next term has two meanings. <laughs> we just want to throw a wrench in it right off the bat. Right. Well, that's publishing for you. There's things that mean different things. Um, so the word blurb has two different applications. The first application for querying might be the way you describe your book, the back cover copy, your pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Within your query letter, you'll have the blurb. And that is the one to three paragraphs that pitch your book to the agent that describe your book. And we always compare it to the back cover copy of the final product. Right. And again, we have tons of videos on the channel. So go watch our video on how to write a query letter. And we go into all of this with a lot more detail and advice. Yep. Um, so the second application of blurb is when authors will give a snippet after reading your book that is used in promotional purposes. So you might see them on the cover. You might see them on book buying retailers. You might on, in the description. Um, this is promotional. It's trying to get other people excited about your book. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be probably asked to work with your publisher to come up with a list of authors um, or reviewers that could blurb the book, which is give a quote, really. Yeah, and this happens, just for clarity, this happens when you're working with a publisher. Usually mm -hmm. when the book is done and it's around the time for marketing and publicity to start, you don't have to do this while you're querying. Yeah, that was good clarification. Yeah, no, you a lot do of not, don't do waste it. your time. Yeah, a lot, and the book is going to change, so. Yeah, and most authors, most published authors will not want to read your book. They may be happy to blurb it once you have a publisher if they have the time to do so, but they don't want to do that. They get, they get enough requests. They're not going to have time to do that before you have a publisher. Especially if they don't know if the book is even going to sell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, our next term is comp title. Um, comparative title. Some people call it competitive titles. I don't mm -hmm. think there's a general consensus on that one, but this is, these are the other books that are similar to your books that you can use to give people a sense of what you've written. Um, right. So if I wrote a picture book, I might say it has the back to school themes of how to get your octopus to school with the humor of counting to bananas. Right. That's just, the, it's like another marketing pitch that you might use to get people excited. 
Yep, exactly. And it's a way to give an idea of the audience of the book as well. Right. Um, our next term is literary agent. That's us. So we are your business partners, basically. We are representing you and your books, working to sell them to publishers, negotiate your contracts, but also strategically plan your career and help you manage the business side of things that you might not know about or you might not even have an interest in doing. And I think we've done a whole video on this. If yeah, I think we have to, what is a literary yeah. agent. So if you really want to dig deep into what to expect from us in our role, check that one out. Yep. So literary agents are paid on commission, only on commission. <laughs> <laughs> if someone is charging you up front or charging you fees, no, run. No. Literary agents should only be paid on commission. That commission will typically be paid from the publisher to the literary agent. We will take our cut and pay you the rest, though sometimes the publisher might split that for you and pay the agent their commission and you your portion. Yep. Um, so you will see commission a lot. You will have to understand commission rates. I think we have a video on that in terms of our author agent contract where we talk about commission, what they should be. Maybe we should do a whole video on commission, um, but and that's how we get paid. And to Winter Willow's question about terms in the contract, there will be a clause in your contract that is the agreement, the agent clause, it's called, right? So it's called the agent agency clause. clause. I, don't know, I don't know what it is. And every contract is different. So some might call it the agency clause, some might not. But the agency clause in your publisher contract will define the commission that your agent will take. It should be exactly the same commission that you, when you signed with your agent, your author agent agreement, it should be the exact same commission. So, so the clause in the, in the publisher agreement acknowledges that the agent will receive a commission. It might acknowledge how that's paid, whether the publisher pays the author directly and the agent directly whether the publisher pays the agent and the agent takes their commission and then pays the author. There are a number of ways that can be done. That's a conversation you can have with the agent. And the agency clause will specify that this is the agent on record for the life of this contract. So for as long as this contract is in force, there are royalties, um, advances, any monies coming into the author, the agent will be the agent of record on that contract. Yes. And for the record, I thought it was a lot smoother than I actually am trying to turn on that light while you were I didn't talking. know what was going on over there. I That's okay, because I have a weird sun glare, so I keep shifting my face so it doesn't shine oh. in my face. This is a very weird video, everyone. We're both a mess. Yeah, it was really dark in here, and I tried to be smooth. It didn't work. Um, and to be honest, this is the second time we filmed this video. The first time, the whole recording process didn't work out so which was a first for us so we've made it a number of years without a technical difficulty that is very true that's a good yeah. point yeah okay. anyway we digress as always that. yeah we do digress. okay so a lot of times when we're talking about books and what agents do we talk about us selling the book yeah. um, but really what agents are doing is licensing the rights and and sometimes that's called selling sometimes it's called granting um so we wanted to talk about all of those you are going to see those terms in your contracts, license or grants. And that means that we are giving the publisher the right to print the book and whatever else is negotiated for the terms that are listed, the advance, the royalties, whatever they might be. And usually a time period, usually right. for the length of the copyright or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's the way it will be spelled out in the publisher contract that you are licensing the rights, granting the publisher the right to publish the book. Um, I think there's an exception sometimes in a writer for hire agreement when the author or the, I'm sorry, the publisher um, came up with the idea and sought an author. In those rare cases, you would actually be sort of selling the book, in which case you are giving up the rights to it. But in the majority of all publishing contracts, you are licensing them really the privilege to publish your book for a certain period of time. Yeah. So when you're on the interwebs and in Twitter, writing community, wherever you might be, um, folks call it, I sold my book or I'm selling my book to, this is what they mean. And yep. this is the scope of what a traditional publishing contract usually is. Yep. Um, okay. So we mentioned, I'm going to swap, swap the order here, not to confuse you, but we mentioned that there's usually an advance. The advance is the portion of money that they're going to give you against royalties when they're buying or licensing the rights to that book. Right. Um, so say they give you a $10,000 advance. This is against future royalty earnings. And you will usually get that 
you should get it before the publication, though now there are some instances where the, publish, the publisher will break down the advance and pay it on publication, but it's usually paid out on triggers. So you might get a portion on signing, a portion when you deliver the manuscript, a portion when you publish. Um, there's so many different configurations for how that could be broken down, but the advance is the, port, the amount of money that you're getting in advance of your royalties and the book going on sale. Yeah, any publication deal, any publishing deal, most publishing deals, um, there's always exceptions. Most publishing deals are royalty earning deals. So you're not getting paid, you're getting the advance and you have to earn that out before you start earning royalties. So that's important to know. That's what the advance is, why it's called an advance. Right, and your royalties are the portion of proceeds that you're getting based on each sale of the book. Um, so you, there will typically be a different rate for hardcover, for paperback, for ebook, and every copy that's sold, you will get a portion, and that will be first applied to your advance. So if you get five dollars in hardcover, it's going against that ten thousand that you received in advance until you earn back that advance, like Jessica said, and you will typically get a royalty statement on a regular interval based on the publisher. Sometimes it's quarterly, sometimes it's every six months, sometimes it's annually. Um, that's reporting how many sales and how much has been applied back to your advance or how much you're getting paid. And a question I'm certain is coming up is you should never have to pay back your advance. If you don't sell enough books to earn out your advance. It doesn't matter. You get to keep that money. There will never be a point when the publisher is going to come and say, okay, we've decided we're never going to sell enough books. You have, you still owe us $5,000. doesn't work that way. That money is yours no matter how well the book does. Right. Though not to be confused and if the contract is terminated prior to publication for some reason. Correct. Correct. Um, okay. So we talked about licensing and part of what we're licensing are territories. We negotiate three territories, North American, world, or world English, typically. Sometimes there, there are variables to that, but those are the three main ones that we deal with. North American means that you are licensing the right to the publisher to only sell the book in North America. World English means you are licensing the right for the publisher to sell worldwide in English only. And world is obviously you're giving, well, maybe it's not obvious, the publisher the right to sell the book around the world in any language in all formats. Um, should Depending on the right you own or you license them is the right you keep. So if you license world English only, that means that you are keeping the right to sell translation, to have your agent sell translation on your behalf. Um, that doesn't mean you give up the money. And that's really an important indicator. It just means that if the publisher is holding translation rights and selling those on your behalf, they are also getting a piece of that pie for, let's say, French rights. Um, if you retain all of those translation rights, the publisher does not get a piece of that pie you keep all that money, obviously, except for commissions you pay to your agent. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Did I answer that right? Okay. Um, okay, but also in terms of printing the rights in different languages, there's other groups of rights that we sell, and those are called sub rights or subsidiary rights. And they can include, I might be missing some, but they can include audio rights, um, film and TV rights, first serial or second serial, which are serialization rights, book club rights, um i'm missing definitely. large print rights large print commercial um, and merchandising which is like plushies and lunch boxes and calendars and all that kind of stuff we're definitely missing some it's a long list but i think you get the idea that there are other ways we could sell or merchandise your book your characters and things like that and um some of those are pretty standard for the publisher to hold on to and share with the author book club is one of those typically publishers connect with let's say book of the month club on a regular basis and they make those deals but performance rights film rights and things like that are typically held by the author and the author and their agent will work to with a film agent will work to um to get those rights licensed and sold yeah these are usually editions of the book or formats of the book outside of the publisher's initial print edition right right Okay, so the last term that we have on our list is also a twofer. Um, the one is not a publishing term, so it's more of a film term. So yeah. we, get, we get a pass here. Um, so it's option. And I feel like a lot of authors are always concerned about the option, but this is basically the clause in your contract that gives your publisher the right of first refusal, meaning they get to see your next work first, and usually exclusively. 
Yeah, and I think a lot of authors um, misunderstand this and assume that what they're doing is agreeing that the publisher can always publish their next books. And that's not the case. All you're doing is giving them the advantage of being the first one to offer if they want to continue working with you, if they want to continue building that career. Um, you know, to, to a certain extent, that's a good thing, right? You want the publisher, but it should still be negotiable. So it doesn't mean that whatever they offer, you have to accept. It doesn't mean that you have to accept it based on this same contract. It just means that you're not going to send it to another publisher until you've given your current publisher a fair shot. There's usually a time limit. If they don't respond within the time limit, you can go out elsewhere. Yeah. We as agents usually try to narrow that as much as possible to the same genre, the same world, the same series, depending on what you're writing, how we can do that to allow you to grow wider if you have other ideas and want to write in different genres or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. So the second term or the second use is usually in the film industry. An option is a portion of time that we are licensing a producer or someone in the film industry, the chance to shop the film or TV rights for your book. Right. Right. And that's usually timed. There's sometimes a year, 18 months, two years, whatever it might be. Um, but that is what we call the agreement that they can do it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's two meanings to that. So I think that is a short rundown of some of the terms. Yes. So we are going to link below the, the, publishing dictionary in its yeah. most recent form, but also make sure you're following us on Instagram and TikTok where Jessica is going to break down these terms at some point. So you don't want to miss them. Um, but otherwise, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you back here next time. Bye.